All right, we are back. X Factor and Impact about to throw down here as we head to the conclusion of Saturday's competition. We are at the 2011 PSP Chicago Open just outside of Chicago in Joliet, Illinois. I'm Matty Marshall, and I'm joined up here in the broadcast booth with Chris LaSoya, paintball legend. Chris, and how are you doing today? Fantastic. Had a long day. You know, get up in the morning, do your thing, eat breakfast, play paintball all day, come up here, hang out with you. Love yeah, it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's good to have you up here, man. You're one of my favorite people to work with of uh, all time. And you mind, man, for sure. So we got X Factor taken on Impact, man. What do you think about these two teams? You know, I, I actually, we practiced Impact. Uh, they're playing really, really strong. You know, they, they came out of the gate a little slow the other day. Um, X Factor, on the other hand, they're, you know, watch the di the damage game. Uh, they're rocking. They played real well. They're shooting good lanes. They're making great moves. This would be a good, really good game. I think the winner of this game actually might move on. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I think that one of the stories of X Factor's success was they were just so good at shooting damage off the break. They really destroyed damage off the break, and they were just having a hard time getting out. So if X Factor can find that groove again and, uh, and start chopping those bodies up at the start of these points, it's going to be really hard for Impact. Now, on the flip side, Impact, you know, they could easily, you know, they, they're a great team, man. They're, just, they're f studded with talent. They got a ton of great players on that team. Um, and this has become such a counterpunch field. So it's like you have to live off the break, but then you have to win those close points then when the chaos starts to happen because there's been a lot of chaos happening in these games. Yeah, you know, and if they uh, if Impact can contain Archie, he's been playing really, really well. Absolutely. Um, if you can contain Archie from making some of those crazy moves, you know, taking those shots, then I think they'll be pretty successful. I agree. And it is, you know, we got about 15 seconds before the start of this first point. Uh, really, it's a great story to see X Factor reunite, get a lot of those original core mo uh, group of guys back together, and then start to, looks like, might be finding their form. All right, let's see here on the breakout. You are looking at impact on your screen right now as they streak out. Guns up, blazing up into the center. Oh, a little slip and a fall. Let's see if he makes it in alive. That's Scott, and he is alive. So it looks like five on five right now for both teams. You know, right now, you know, they're both in pretty much the same positions right now. Who's going to make the next Chris move is going to be the is going to be the winner, obviously. Yeah, yeah and well, it's also doubling up that back center, and, and we're both teems off the break, and they're finally now uh, Wemet able to get out for impact, and now it's trying to scurry up. And it looks like Ryan Moorhead gets taken out, so it's four on five, five players left alive for at, or for uh, X Factor. And X Factor, man, they were doing such a good job, Chris, at shooting players off the break. And then they didn't get anyone off the break for impact, but then able to, to capitalize on a, a little bit of a sloppy move for Moorhead trying to come up on that Dorito side. Yep, and then, you know, they, they're shooting their lanes. Yeah, three on four right now. So it looks like three players left alive for impact trying to do damage control. Get out in that far corner back bunker on the Dorito side. And now it's three on three. So here comes Archie making moves up in the center, and he gets taken out. So Scott's still alive. No, but he gets polished off by Colt Roberts, who is able to sneak in there. It's two on two. Colt Roberts shooting cross field. Colt Roberts owns the snake. Colt Roberts making his move up here. You're looking at the insert bunker for impact. The farthest player up on the snake side of the field. And now he moves into snake one. So Colt Roberts, and he picks him up. Colt Roberts picks up impact. So tense moments here on the snake side of the field. You're looking at Colt Roberts from X Factor. Gunned up. He has the drop on impact in the snake. Oh, but Colt Roberts gets shot cross field. And so now the snake is all impact. And there's just one player left alive in that back corner bunker. And it's going to be tough for him to stay alive back there. And it's Schultz into the snake for impact. The impact looking good this point. It was a really back and forth game, Matty. Yeah, it's definitely a back and forth point, but we've really started to see that a lot more um, as these teams are starting to master this field. Now it's a one on one. Look at this. It's like we were talking about back and forth game. And it's going to be Schultz. Can't tell who is in the back corner. I think it might be one of the Odell brothers. Might definitely. Be I, th I think it's definitely one of the Odell brothers. And, and, you know, he's in a much better position right now than Schultz is. Yeah, Schultz is having to work with the snake. Oh, Schultz almost gets clipped. Schultz working the, a whole, the whole part of the snake. He's got a lot of those stand-up bunkers in front of him that he can use. You know, not just that, Manny, but you know, he, can, he might catch a stray ball bouncing off one of these one of these snake bunkers too. Yeah, when those balls start winging in through there. You never know. It's, it's tough. You have to take that in consideration. And Schultz trying to edge out over a little bit more down onto X Factor's side of the field. And he's going to jump over the snake. That's a good move, Manny. Right. Yeah, there. that is a good move. And now he's closing the distance. Trying to engage in a, ooh, narrowly again, avoids living on the edge. Schultz 
Schultz definitely the aggressor here in this one-on-one -on -one that sometimes works out in your favor, sometimes not. You know, and as we talked before, Matt, you know, as I'm sure you've talked about this before, there's no coaching now on that Dorito side of the field over Absolutely. there. So Dusty, he's, he's out there by himself right now. Yeah, so Dusty is going to have to just use whatever information his brain can suck in here as Schultz uh, playing pretty aggressively here in this one-on-one -on -one situation. Schultz about to load his last pod. And he's got to be careful, you know, start getting on that trigger when you only got a little about 150, 160 paintballs left. And one of the Odell brothers, I think it's Dusty Odell in that back corner, and he's just playing peekaboo with Schultz right now. I'm sure he's almost out of paint as well, you know. I mean, it gets to that point. I was carrying six paws in the field, and I, right at this point, I'd probably be out of paint too, you know. And, Matty, as you, you've been known for, you're one of the better closers and one-on-one -on -one players out there. Um, you know, you were, this, is, this is your stuff right here. Yeah, and when you get in a situation like this, this is when your team's counting on you. And this is when legends are made. You yourself, great one-on-one -on -one player. The si situation is, that's why you carry more paint. You do not want to put, it's one of my, and I, we talk about it all day. When people run out of paint, uh, it just really irritates the hell out of me because you do not want to put yourself in a position where you're picking paintballs up off the ground. Yeah, and I think that happened with Aftershock with Chad. Uh, yeah, and he made it work to his event. I mean, <laughs> that was a great. That's uh, great. He ran down a guy in a snake, and then, then uh, pulled off that one-on-one -on -one victory. Unfortunately, just you know, aftershock, underperforming here at this event. Um, yeah, and I think Dusty. I think you're right, Chris. That's a good observation. He's out. He's got to be out of paint because he has not really been engaging at all. You know, I, you know, and I've seen. I've you know, I, this. I've seen my fair share. I mean, you know, you guys were watching the webcast the other day, but I've seen my fair share of one-on-ones. Um, oh, and he clips Odell as he goes into that can. Yeah, so Dusty Odell it compl must have been completely out of paint. Really no reason for him to try to make that move that big of a gap or across that big of a gap. So Schultz playing very well over here on the snake side of the field. He's going to hang that flag. So nice job. Impact going to take that first point. Five minute long point there. Might be one of the, I think that's, I don't think that's the long, yeah, I think that might be the longest point of the day that we've seen so far. Uh, yeah, actually that was what I was going to say. You know, I've seen a few one-on-one -on -one games here where um, it had come down to, you know, those four or five minute one-on-ones, um, you know, and it's, it's due to paint, you know, not having enough paint, you know, and, you know, you don't want to lose because, and, and they're at a crucial moment right here. It's not like anybody had to win, you know, nobody's up four or five points, so it's a crucial, crucial point. So we're heading into the last matches of the day. You're watching X Factor take on Impact, and X Factor, if they win this match, will basically kind of win or go home for both these teams, and then Dynasty taking on damage in the last game of the day. Now, X Factor and Impact have played five matches during the last four years, and X Factor has uh, beaten Impact two of those five matches by an average of one point. So every time X Factor beats Impact, it's a very close match. Impact's beaten X Factor three of the five matches, by an average of three points. So a little bit bigger point spread when Impact's taking it to X Factor. Now all of these, they have, they have never met ever except in the prelims. You know, you know and, and as you said before, you know, it, the, you know, those stats, you know, they make a difference because now the X Factor has their core guys back together. Mm -hmm. You know, just like I'm back with Infamous now. Yep. And, and it's going to make a difference as you start to gel, you know, the years start to go by. Uh, you start to gel a little more and I'm, I'm so happy to be back with my boys again. You know, the gelling is only going to be a matter of time for these teams. Yeah, I want to get to that a little bit more. We had Nikki up here who's picking his brain. There's a lot of Infamous fans out there. And since we have you up here, um, definitely want to hear what you have to say about that squad. Uh, and this is the first time that these two teams have played each other this season. So, you know, it's always a little bit of a feeling out process when that starts to happen. Well, there's so many good players out here. You know, Tim, I mean, I, I could, I could it'd take me in, uh, two, two to 20 minutes yeah. to name everybody. <laughs> yeah. The plethora of players and the level of, of talent is just great. I love it. All right, so you're looking at X Factor on your screen. Archie Montemayor right there, dead center. Got Todd Morrow out there. And it looks like X Factor, four on five. X Factor with four. Oh, no, three now. So it's three on five, full squad. It's impact pressing. It's Chad George gets all the way to the 50 yard line snake. And it looks like they're yeah, still five bodies left alive. Only two left alive. Now just one. So wait, no, two players. Still two players left alive for X Factor. Back center and the stand up temple here in the center. But it's all impact right now as Chad George pushing cross field. All the way on to X Factor side. I do not think he knows, Chris, that there is a player in that stand up I, temple. I, I think his gun is down. I think he knows he's there, but his gun is down right now. Because otherwise, he'd be blasting right now. Yeah, he's now you can see he's filling with his gun, which has definitely got some, some balls coming through the barrel now. So he's back up. And he is going to smartly crawl back and switch positions. And you can hear the coaches all screaming. Oh, look at that. But it was, uh, it was uh, Todd Morrow. But there's really not much he could do in that position. So just that one player left alive in the back center, and he is going to wave off and tap out. 
You know, that, yeah. that was a great point. You know, those getting the key eliminations on the break. Um, and that was pretty much, that was, I think that was a minor penalty called on, on X Factor. And it was, a, it was a decent call. He was hitting the leg, um, coming out to this side and the snake side, and uh, he continued to play. Yeah. Penalties have been, um, they've haunted some teams. So, you know, speaking of teams that are haunted by penalties traditionally, Infamous. So I got you up here, uh, Infamous underperforming. You know, incredibly talented roster. One of the most talented rosters. It, you could argue maybe the most talented roster, other than maybe Dynasty Russians. Um, what's going wrong? You know, um, I I really don't know. It's you know, I I wish if I knew I'd fix it. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, the, we're like you said, we have a talented roster. Uh, we're making moves. We're doing our thing. And uh, you know, I just think it's just going to be a matter of time before we gel. You know, we we've had our we have hiccups today, obviously. Um, this is my first PSP I've played with these guys because I played with Aftershock prior to this. Um, but I, I mean, I think that you know it's just a matter of time before we get some get our stuff together. You know, Todd came over; he's doing some great coaching. Uh, Dan Wake is is in there. To, you know, he's a smart, smart person, very laid back. Um, I like I said, man. I, I just hope it's a matter of time. I've always wanted to play with Nikki. I've always wanted to play with Cali. You know, I just I see these guys as brothers and friends, and these are these are guys I want to do the best for. And I th I think that we just have to kind of. You know, tighten our stuff up a little bit and, and kind of commit a little more than what we are. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's kind of, Nikki said it very well too, similar stuff to what you're saying. I really think it's focus. We talked about that actually off air before we came on for this game. And uh, I just really think if you guys were to, uh, to focus as much as you possibly can on doing all those extra steps behind the scenes, man, it's, it's going to be a scary, infamous squad. All right, about 15 seconds to go before the start of this next point. And speaking of trying to get something going, X Factor needs to get something going here against Impact. Score 2-0. to zero. Big goose egg right now for X Factor. Yeah, you know, I look for them to come back, though, on this for sure. Yeah, they played great earlier on today. They're digging out, trying to make it. They have a player in the box, starting with that minor penalty. It's four on five right now. Five players, all uh, full team squad strong here for impact as they're starting to push up field, moving up on that Dorito side. Looks like Justin Cornell able to get into the 40-yard line snake, and he's backed up. And, yep, by Ryan Moorhead. So still four on five. No, oh, now it's... So it's three on four right now, it looks like, as Impact able to aggressively push forward, and they have a player in the snake. So, Chris, how do you feel this field's been playing so far? You know, it's all in the break. If you shoot those corners in the break and you get the key eliminations, you are just going to run it down these people's throat. The only option, once you, once you lose your corner guy, is to get out there and fill the corner. And if the, if the guys are on their lane and you go to fill out, you're going to blast them too. So, you're not losing one body, you're losing two. And they're running, I mean, it's, 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 it's a tough field, man. Yeah, speaking of losing bodies, here goes both players dying out of that back center. So it's just, I believe, I think there's just one player left alive in that back corner, Chris. No, two. Yeah, oh, you're right. There's one in both corners. Both corners for uh, X Factor. But it's been all impact so far this game. They have field position right now. They have uh, a two-body advantage and now a three-body advantage. As it looks like Ryan Cohen dying out of that back corner. for, And that's going to do it. This point, it's been all 100% impact so far as they go up 3-0. to zero. And we talk a lot about that three-point spread as uh, one of the ACMAC brothers coming and doing a great job over here on the snake side of the field for impact. So impact looking real good right now. Absolutely. You know, they're, they're taking, they're shooting their, on their break. They're getting those, you know, eliminations. And by getting those eliminations, I'm telling you, it's really hard to recover. If they, if they shoot their lane and they, sh and they get their corner guys in the break, if you fill that and get, get the angles, it's really, really hard to get out. Mm -hmm. Really hard. Because, I mean, I was having no problem. You saw earlier, I'd come out, I'd shoot my lane. If I got my G, I'd come out, I'd fill down these pins, and then it's almost impossible for you to get out for that. And then, you know, you filter the stake, and you come down the Doritos, and it's just over. Yep. So they're going to have to adjust. X Factor might want to call a timeout here. This would be a pretty clutch point to uh, call the timeout on and try to figure out exactly what's going wrong. I can see they're huddling up right now with their coach in the pit area trying to figure out exactly what is misfiring with their plan because, uh, you know, they really they've been getting chewed up off the brakes slightly, um, but then also they're just really not getting any, anything going on the offense side of things. Impact really not doing anything special um, other than, you know, well, they are shooting players off the break, but they've just playing sound fundamental paintball right now. Um, they're not losing people stupid. They're shooting players off the break. They're just doing 
the solid fundamental stuff that you need to win games. Score three to zero right now. Yeah, so there we go. X Factor calling that timeout. That was a good call right there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're going to throw a timeout, it's now it's th yeah three zero. <laughs> well, you know, not looking good. Perfect example. You know, let's bring up the Ironman uh, vicious game. Yes, four zero. Yep, four zero. You know, we had some technical difficulties here on the field, and uh, that gives a good team like the Ironman a chance to regroup. You know, sit back, chill out. They come back in the field, and man, it's a it's a ball game all of a sudden. Yeah, you know that technical time it was like almost seriously. It was like we had a game with two halves. Yeah, and in the first half. The Ironman were getting destroyed after that long 10-minute technical timeout. They really had figured out what it was, and they came and I actually talked to Kevin Brethauer, Skinny, Ke Skinny Kevin, their coach, and he asked me, he's like, w what happened that game? And I was like, well, honestly, you guys didn't start playing paintball until that technical timeout. And he's like, yeah, I know. And um, and then after that, it was a totally different game. So very smart timeout by uh, X Factor. Let's see if they can make the best of it, though, come up with some sort of game plan. And, it, you know, they really haven't been shooting any imp impact players off the break. And that really was what the difference was when they took down damage earlier on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and I, I expected a lot more um, of the landing like we talked about from damage. Damage is a great landing team. Um, they usually shoot those spots in the break, and those shots that are on the break are actually pretty decent to make. Um, I was really dis disappointed and surprised um, that damage didn't have a lot more Gs on the break. Yeah, I, I agree. All right, so we got about a minute to go before the start of this next point. So, Chris, you know, you've been playing with Aftershock. You've definitely been around the block just in general, but the past couple years, I know you're battling through that knee injury. How's the knee treating you right now? You know, um, you, you'd know better than anybody. I watched the Chicago video, and I was doing a lot of limping for sure. Um, I don't feel like I, w I haven't had much knee, knee pain at all. I mean, I think I'm recovering a little bit. Yeah, you look faster than you had been. Right. Um, I don't think you're up to 100% of the speed that you've had in the past. Right. And uh, But that being said, you know, I, there's no noticeable limp anymore. I mean, before, even though you, you had had the surgery and things were healing, um, you just didn't really look like yourself body-wise. And now I think you're starting to get back to that form. You know, your gun skills, that's always going to be there. Um, but it's mobility is such a huge part of your game, so I, that's got to be a confident boost to start to get that knee up back to 100%. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was painful, man, for a while, and honestly, this is the first time that I haven't had pain in my knee for a minute, so I'm pretty happy to be back for sure. All right, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what <laughs> happens. Hey, there's you know, there's a lot of year left. Absolutely. Two more events. Yep. All right, here we go on your screen. You are looking at X Factor, and they are digging hard, trying to get out. Trying to keep five alive, which they've had a hard time doing, and it looks like they are, but they are able to shoot one of the impact players off the break. So four on five, no, and then they immediately lose Grayson Goff out of that back center. And it's a double-edged sword in that back center, Chris, when you double up that back center, and that's what a lot of teams have been doing. Talk about that strategy with me. Well, you know, the, the key is to, to split your guns and get the heck out of there. If you stay in the back center and they get outside on you, it is not a hard shot to shoot back in, and it's very, very small back there. So that happens a lot, man. You get two people pinched back there, and the shot to the back center is not that difficult, and then you lose one or two of them. For for sure. All right, so yeah, looking at four on four right now. It's just even across the board and a little bit. Oh, and then they lose. Uh, looks like one of the players for X Factor coming off. So that's Ryan Cohen. A have, Cohen just had, they're having a hard time staying alive in the bunkers right now. I don't know. This just looks like a little bit of a different X Factor team than we saw earlier this morning. I you know I don't know if they. Went and ran 13 or 14 miles before they played this <laughs> one, or ate a big lunch, or they're just, they're what not, they're not Their moves are not as crisp as they were earlier. Um, I agree. You know, they, they, were, uh, they were pretty decent. Yeah, three, you know. yeah, and look at this. And as Tim Montresor gets shot, now two, two, two bodies left alive. They lose Wamed out of that back center as well. And Josh Davey getting shot is just is complete destruction of impact. So here comes X Factor and able to get back in it. One player left alive for impact that he pauses off Roberts though. Here we go to that oh, chaotic Jesus. point. Just getting murdered coming up to that Dorito. Yes. Archie, like I said, man, Archie's having a, a great day. Yeah, well, he's a great player. Absolutely. You know, I, I played with him in the All-Star game in the MPPL in uh, Jacksonville. The kid is he's awesome. He's now, a great he, guy. He, now he's a great guy. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say that too. He's, he's a great guy. He's very laid back. He's super cool to hang out with. Very intelligent um, player. Absolutely. Maintains his composure regardless of what's happening. You know, you see a lot of guys, even if they're great players, will, the franticness will set in a little bit when uh, when things start to go the wrong way. Archie's never that guy, you know, regardless of what's happening. And, and we do bring that up occasionally. But um, I think that that's a really big reason that he's one of the best players out there. And he's, you know, one of the leaders on, uh, on X Factor. It was a big loss to X Factor when Archie went to Dynasty a couple years ago. Now he's back in the fold. They also have the uh, Odell brothers back, Dusty and Devin. Um, also, 
you know, Dusty, uh, I, I believe that, you know, Devin, he went and played in Europe a bunch. He played with Dynasty, and I think his skill evolved. He's in great shape. He's a monster now. Did you oh, see Devin? Geez. I mean, the, a lot of these kids are monsters. Remember these kids when we were growing up? We yeah. were beating their little butt. I, no, and he was, you know, this skinny kid, uh, always with a grin, smile, that, you know, that happy go lucky. He's got that. That glow, you know, Devin's oh. got that. He's got that great presence. To he him. does. He actually, and he came out. He lived. He was my roommate for a whole summer last summer. And oh, uh, good and lord, yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, but man, he's bulked up, man. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, yeah, he's a he's monster now. Him, you know, there's a lot of kids. Look at Bear. <laughs> you see oh, Bear? Oh God, yeah, Bear good is lord. giant. He's speaking of giants, Phil Dominguez. You know, how's Phil Dominguez doing? He's still big. <laughs> I mean, he, he's you know, I love Phil Dominguez. He is. He's great. He has that bounce factor going on, which oh. is you know very important. Yeah, the bounce factor. Absolutely. This is, uh, was definitely clutch back in the I, day. I wouldn't call him fat. I call him more big boned. I mean, the guy has no neck. <laughs> no, he doesn't. So he's probably gonna kill me when I get home, but that's all right. I don't mind. He's sitting here texting me, and I'm just you know the, f the thing is I have a voice on here, and you don't feel so. <laughs> 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 oh, you know who was ribbing you earlier was Rab. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rab was getting you. I bet he was. Yeah. Well, you know, and I was just that I was talking to Rab. I'm like, we were just loving this right now, huh? Yeah. He's like, you, that, if Chris he, loses 25 pounds, yeah, you might be okay. It, so pretty much. Yeah. Well, I have hair. Shut up. <laughs> 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 he's been bald for 20 years, right? <laughs> Kick rocks. Oh. oh here All we right. Go. Here we go. See the start of this next point, and on the breakout, it looks like. Four bodies left alive for or off the break and it gets five. So four bodies for impact, five for X Factor, as X Factor doubling up that back center. You know, it looked to me like Impact started off with a penalty right there, Matty. Yeah, but I don't see anybody in the box. Mm, there, and, I, they, and there's nothing on the board either. That's odd. That is definitely odd. I don't know if they didn't field five guys or had some sort of chaos in their pits and weren't able to get somebody out. Sometimes that does happen. It's very rare, very rare, but it does happen. Especially at this level. Especially at this level. Yeah, especially at this level. I mean, Bart, you never Bart's want that have, to happen. Bart's going to have a heart attack. I guarantee. Yeah, I mean, they're winning right now. They let X Factor get on the board here finally. We got ourselves a two point game. It's three to one in favor of Impact as we crack the 10 minute mark. Nine minutes and 50 seconds left to play. You're looking at the wide shot on your screen, and, and guess what? Nobody in the snake. There's nobody in the snake for either team. It's five on three right now in favor of X Factor. So the, look at this X Factor trying to get back on the. Oh, and Colt Roberts dies trying to get into snake. And wasn't a very good move. So it's four on three right now. Still X Factor with a numerical advantage. And, well, I was going to say field, field advantage, but they don't. Right, the field position is definitely slightly, slightly in favor. I would say definitely slightly in favor of Impact. As Impact is a player in the God Bunker, uh, the insert bunker right behind the snake. And that's Chad George. Chad George, another player that played for Dynasty last year. As Dynasty shed all of their. Uh, or not all, but most of the uh, players that they were importing. Look at this, now X-Factor making that move. That was one of the Odell brothers. Oh, and he gets shot out of there. Yeah, it's Devin Odell getting shot, so it's two on three, so turn of events here, as now Impact initially down a body, but they have the advantage right now as Chad George is making his way up the snake, and as he gets past the 50-yard line, two on three. You know that's a, you know Chad is a great player, man. It was just a matter of time for he got in that snake, especially when he had some back help there too. Yeah. Well, Chad George is one of those players that he started out as one of those machines, those like little minions that you would joystick. That uh, Adam um, Gardner would be joysticking up the field when he was playing for came out of Philly. But now he's really involved into a much more complete player. Now just one player left alive in that back center for X-Factor, and it was looking like X-Factor was going to score another point, but Todd Morrow is going to get polished off out of that back center. Nice job by Chad George staying in the game and handling business over here on the snake side of the field. Backed up by Yakmek, and a great job by Impact here to, to further their point lead. It's going to be 4-1. to one. And coming through in that 4-on-5, you know, they come out here and start with four players. Maybe that's their plan, game plan. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, works. hey -o. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, just go unconventional. Yes. Let's just go there at four, see how it works out yeah, for us. Yeah, you know, I'm sure we practiced it, right? <laughs> you know, I felt bad for the guys. We were out here on, uh, I think it was Friday, Thursday. We were out here on a Thursday, and uh, we were supposed to have a practice with Impact, but, you know, because of the torrential downpours and everything, we had a whole netted field up. We were all ready to go, but the torrential rain and the thunderstorms and everything actually tore the field up. Uh, we had our field set up. There was no netting, you know, as a safety issue. We obviously couldn't play, so mm -hmm. they drove all the way out here to play us, play us on Thursday, and it was unfortunate that we couldn't practice those guys. So, um, 
you know, I think they might have rolled out to Badlands or whatever. Man, the paintball gods just, and the, it's, they hate paintball. It's, it's unbelievable. I swear, <laughs> at, setting up a paintball event, I really I believe is the equivalent to doing some sort of like Hopi rain dance <laughs> because it's just I don't know what it is about the mechanisms of setting up a paintball event or planning a paintball event but you know it's not every time but at least once a year we get some hurricane or a tornado or some sort of just cataclysmic event storming towards the paintball and uh, and you know this time it just took out a, took out a ton of uh, a poles oh and, my goodness. and infrastructure wise I mean, people don't understand how much work how many man hours go into getting this event ready for competition. And when you have some sort of disastrous thing like that, it doubles the amount of work that these these poor guys got to do out here. And hats off to Lane and his whole crew, Bert, uh, every single one of the setup crew it worked double time and were able to pull it off and, and to make this event happen. And, you know, a lot of props to the PSP, Dave Youngblood running the show, Lane Wright running the show, Die Precision, able to make this webcast happen, able to make this event happen, really putting on some great events. Absolutely, you know, and thanks to Dave and Alan and Lane, those guys for doing this because I love it too. All right, so here we go on the breakout. Both teams back at five strong, and both teams it looks like with five. Nope, Tim Montress are getting shot in that back corner. So four on four right now, as looks like Johnson coming off limping a little bit for X Factor. X Factor, they got that three. They're down three right now, and it looks like just three in impact players left alive. So X Factor really needs to win this point. Chris, we talk about that three point spread, and just briefly, you know, talk to me about how mental the momentum shift can be. Oh, you know, and you, you, when you're down that many points man you, you, it's more there's so much more pressure there's so much more pressure on getting things done and being down three points especially on a field like this where they can just lock you down you know it's it's tremendous pressure trying to push it and you don't want to push it because when you start pushing it, as you know maddie you start making mistakes oh absolutely so three on three seesaw battle man I, we've been seeing this all event and these these teams starting to really master this field and try to make things happen and in the course of that occurring what's happening is a lot of guys are getting shot and look at this. Looks like uh, Dixon Yang getting shot out of that center for X-Factor. That's not a good death for Dixon because his team needs to win this point to stay in this match to score four to one. As that time really starting to tick off the clock, six minutes and 40, and there's just one player left alive here in the snake for X-Factor. And they're gonna uh, smartly concede the point because you know impacts, they're not gonna come. They're just gonna sit in their bunkers and chill out and. You know, Absolutely. pull out a big Cuban cigar, light it, enjoy <laughs> the day. Really no reason for them to advance. They're up. Now they're up four. And uh, it's just not looking good for X Factor. I don't know where the, where did the X see this has been X Factor's problem a lot of times though. You know, they come out one game and just play awesome. They played awesome against damage in their first game of, the, of their well, their first game of the day. And now they come out here and they take on impact and and, and X Factor's in a must win situation and they're playing flat. Yeah, I know. You know it, it's unfortunate because they were making very crisp, quick moves. You know, they were playing off each other real well. I think there's a lot of individuals playing out there now, which is our problem, I think. Yes, um, I agree. You know, making individual moves and just not getting any support, not supporting their people that are supposed to be supporting. Um, they're making great moves, getting good field position. They're getting a G in the break or whatever or two, and uh, they're just not capitalizing on what they're doing. That's all. I absolutely agree. They're definitely not capitalizing on any sort of advantage that confronts themselves. Like, for instance, they had a point in this, or there was a point in this last point where they could have tried to make something happen and at least get this to be a closer game, but I just threw it away. About 50 seconds to go before the start of this next point here. Score 5-1. to one. It's been all Edmonton Impact. You know, and uh, as we're looking at the score right now, as you said, you know, coming back from deficit like this is ridiculous. It's really hard, Matty. Mm-hmm. Very mental. Oh, it, it, with six minutes and 41 seconds left, they've only scored one point this game. Now they have to come and score four just to tie it to take it to overtime. That's a tall order. Very, very tall order. 20 seconds to go. You know, look at the crowd out here. What, what a great crowd today. You know, there's a lot of people out here watching. Uh, the Midwest crew here, man, they, they really dig paintball, and I really enjoy coming out here because everybody's so nice. I'm from the Midwest, as you know. I love the Midwest. Yeah, I great. mean, there's great people from the Midwest. Spending a couple days in Chicago. and Great uh, food. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, the food is absolutely awesome, and uh, yeah, the Midwest people so nice. All right, so here on the breakout, five alive for both teams, and for the first time, I think, actually, we have five alive for more than a couple seconds. And a little bit of moves being made on both sides as looks like Dusty O'Dell being able to get into the 40 yard line Dorito for X Factor and great cross field spread for X Factor. Oh, four alive for Impact now. And four alive for X Factor. 
as they lose their look like Colt Roberts dying out of that back corner and they're just also bodies continue to drop for impact three alive for impact only one player left alive uh, it's just Schultz over here for impact three players for X Factor Archie, that was a good move by Archie to get back over here and do some sort of damage control. Absolutely, because, I mean, he can shut them down from trying to come up the Doritos. Um, he needs to get in the snake, go to work. Look for him to get in the snake. He's going to get in the snake. Um, him sitting there is not helping as much as he could. Yes. Now Schultz doing a good job here, just trying to tie up and engage Odell. It's, a, it's all tie on the bodies, though. And it, you know, if Schultz, if Schultz over here dies, it's going to be some bad trouble for impact. If Schultz dies, that will give Archie the entire side to work with. So Schultz really needs to play tight over here. He's playing kind of little, I mean, he was playing very tight in there, um, but he was trying to engage with Dusty. I think this is a smarter move now, because he's now he's trying to get a shot on that back corner. You know, there are a lot of shots from the snake, but this is a tough snake to play. I mean, you really got to know your stuff over here Absolutely. To, to engage. Look at this, big moves. Ryan Moorhead able to take down Dusty Odell. And now it's just one player left alive. It's Archie trying to make something happen. He's going to run down Schultz. He pulses him off. Didn't trade out with him, though. Oh, oh. major oh, penalty, minor penalty on Schultz. And that is going to do it for impact. So nice job by Archie Montemayor. He's going to sprint that flag, and that's very smart. Trying to beat the guy in the box, and he does it. Heads up play by Archie. Able to get in there. Great job, Chris. I'll tell you what, that speaks to the composure and experience of Archie. Absolutely. And we talked about Archie earlier. He's just playing. He's, he's a great paintball player, man. I mean, look at that. That was heads up paintball. He knew what happened. He knew what the call was. Um, he blew he blew Schultz's head off 100%. And, 100%. Uh, and, you know, he, that just that comes out of the experience. You know, when he could have, you know, unfortunately, Schultz calls him to impact that game because he should never spawn or he got, he got the drop on him. He's just taking it and get off the field. Yeah, you know? and that's one of those things where it's like, hey, I understand you want to trade, and we teach guys that. It's like, look, if somebody comes to get you, you make sure you trade out. However, do not draw a penalty. So, you know, he tried to run the ragged edge, and he got caught, and, uh, and that hurt impact. Now, three-point game here. Four minutes and 40 seconds left. It's feasible. It, it, it is feasible. But I'll, I'll tell you what. We haven't seen a ton of quick points. X Factor actually scored a, has scored some quick points. Um, and uh, it, it, it's, it is possible. I, I, you know, the game is still within X Factor's reach. But they've really got to step it up. They cannot continue. They can't come out like they've been coming out this game so far and expect to try to tie this up with four minutes and 40 seconds left and three points to go. Absolutely not. You know, and both teams are playing really good paintball right now. I mean, it's like you said, it's back and forth. It's just who's going to survive? Who's going to survive the madness? Yeah, exactly. Who's going to? Because that's basically that has absolutely been. That's madness has been a very good way to describe a lot of these points. Uh, you get in a situation where you know these teams they put themselves in position and a guy, a couple guys died on the bunker. Someone will make a move, counter punch move will happen. Another counter punch move will happen. Happen after that, we're up here trying to call the madness and uh, and, and it's uh, it's been a very interesting event so far. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, all the painful action we're gonna have coming at you tomorrow. So you are watching the 2011 Chicago PSB webcast. And Maddie Marshall got Chris Lasoya up here. We're watching X Factor taking on Impact. We got lots more paintball action coming at you tomorrow morning and all day tomorrow as we watch the semifinals and the finals. Here we go, both teams, and it looks like Impact having to starting down a body because of that great move by Archie. Five on four. X Factor on the power play. And Yakmek able to get into the stand-up can or some sorry stand-up temple in the center for impact and here comes Colt Roberts nice move by Colt Roberts able to get into snake one you know Colt usually picking up that cross field shot you know he missed him going up from the corner up to that Dorito he usually doesn't miss that shot usually that's usually his first shot yeah Colt so. Roberts is a very good shot four on five on three right now five on three numerical advantage for X back Colt Roberts sloppily looks out into a ball not good as Chad George walks off. So there's no one on the side of the field, on the snake side of the field. It's three on three. Oh, look at this. Dusty Odell gets caught. Archie's still alive. And Archie's going to go hunting. Two on three. And it looked like it was going to be X Factor's point, but Impact. Four bodies left alive for Impact right now. It's four bodies. And it looks like. Oh, and Archie gets taken out. So it's just all Impact at this point. So Impact one point away from sealing the deal and taking down X-Factor the score. Now 6-2, to two, 
three minutes and 26 seconds left in regulation. And I don't. Where did this flat X factor come from? Did I? I have no idea. You know, you, I'm looking at the field, and uh, you know, I, I was. It, this this punch can go back and forth. Like we've yes. been up four on twos before. John's up in the A. You know, I'm somewhere. God knows where. Mm -hmm. You know, we have Zach or, or Justin coming up the Doritos, and they clip you out. I mean, you got to be really careful pushing on this field. Like, Colt was in a great position, got sloppy, looked into a ball, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, coaching mistake, whatever, whatever. You can never blame other coaches. You know, I mean, you, you can only play paintball. <laughs> you know, if you look out into a ball, that's pretty much your own fault. Uh, yep. Um, you know, and it's it's such a game changer. And X Factor looked really good on the break there. They had, a, a, you know, one person advantage. Um, you know, they went up real quick, but then they, they just lost bodies real quick after that. And it's just, I think they're getting lazy. Yeah, which is sad to say because they just look so good against damage earlier. And, you know, we're up here jocking them because they were looking like to regain that in-your-face Texas swagger X-Factor ball that they'd been, we'd all come to know and love and not want to play against. Um, but uh, they just, it's just not, not doing it for them right now. 40 seconds to go here on the countdown clock before the start of the next point. Impact looking good, man. Impact looking good. They, um, they're, they're just playing really calm, methodical, smart paintball right now. They're not making any mistakes. They're capitalizing on X-Factor's uh, play and, and the mistakes X-Factor's making. And I'll tell you, another thing they're doing is they're shooting guys off the break. That's really been the difference. Um, so far, and I'm really, I think that all the teams that are going to be playing tomorrow really need to take strong looks at uh, at who's shooting back at them, what angles they're they're shooting at, at which uh, guys that are running out to their specific spot. So it's like, hey, if, we, if we're sending guys to the back corner, who's shooting at us? Can we edge a guy out? Maybe throw some paintballs back to them. Should I run out shooting? Or just stop going? Throw, yeah, stop going. Yeah, stop there. going to the back corner. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like timeout called by, I mean, that's got to be by X-Factor. Yeah. There'd be no reason Impact would call a timeout at this point, other barring major technical gun malfunctions or something. You know, and, and like you said before, you know. It's oh, Impact did call a timeout, it looks like. I, I mean, there must be some. Jay Tro, kicking it on the field. You know, on your screen right now, you got X-Factor, you know, taking a look around the field. You know, Jason Trozen coming up. He's, that guy's no joke. No joke. Yeah, Jay Trozen, he's got a great paintball mind. I like all the coaches. There's no coaches out there that I, I, that I don't like, um, that I don't feel are up to the job. Yeah, Jay Trozen, he's such a great story, too, because you know he's, I think, one of the biggest guys to ever play professional paintball. And you're talking to a lot of people out there, oh, I, I can't play paintball at this level. Um, you know, I, I'm just, I can't play paintball at this level because I, I'm too big or I'm too slow, and I, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to compete. You do not need to be a rocket. You do not need to be a midget. You do not need to be an athletic specimen. Anyone can play the game at this level if if you are able to have the mental capacity to do it. And Jay Trojan is a perfect example of that. Jay Trojan played professional paintball for the uh, All-Americans and for Detroit Thunder when the NXL first started. When the NXL first started, and that's when the whole like minion robot thing started. Yeah. And he was still out there throwing down with the best of them, and he because because of his gun skills. So that's the thing you have to cultivate your talents. He was a monster gunfighter, and he was able to play at the top levels. Yep. And he was able to get that experience, and now he's a great coach. Chris Hooker, perfect example. He, I mean, he's Chris not Hooker. he's not the fastest guy in the world, Mike but he will Mike shoot Paxson. you. Oh yeah, Rich Look at Telford. Me. I'm fat. Come on, I'll still shoot well, you. Well, I wouldn't say you're quite <laughs> fat yet, Chris. Come on. Yet? No, thanks, man. Appreciate <laughs> it. Let's, let's bring a couple of these things here, and I'll put a little pounds on. <laughs> good times, good friends. This is how we are out here, PSP. Absolutely. So, let's see here if X Factor can stay in this game. Three minutes and 23 seconds left, and look at this. X Factor now being able to put impact on their heels off the break. Four bodies left alive. Oh, oh they lose two players. Oh, I don't know what was going, going on over there. Were you looking? I was looking towards X, uh, Impact side of the field. What happened to that, X Factor? They, they just both X Factor. Both those guys went to the snake at the same time. Somebody was shooting that lane, and uh, it just it and it's yeah. Dude, it, they, it, they literally. It, it looked disastrous. It looked completely and utter. It just looked terrible. Oh my! I, I have. I'm lost for words right now. Yeah, X Factor just uh, falling apart at the seams um, right now. As Impact looks awesome, um, Impact just they're just really just taking advantage of the mistakes that X Factor's making. They're shooting guys off the break, they're making crisp moves, and uh, really doing not a lot wrong. I, I have to really give Impact the nod um, at their stellar play here, taking down an X Factor. I, I really thought this was going to be a better game. I was really I looking forward too. to this game. Um, both these teams needing a win, but Impact proving today that they were the better team. 
and maintaining their composure here when the chips are down. So that flag is going to get walked in by Schultz. Great job by him and uh, great job by everyone on the impact squad. Uh, Ryan Moorhead on the, uh, the Dorito side of the field. Now I think it was real smart by Impact to, to really cherry pick some of the best players from the uh, from the old school Philly American squad. Uh, you know they have uh, Tim Montressor, Ryan Moorhead, um, Sam Monville, and those guys have really been helping out what I thought was an already very strong lineup with uh, you know the Akmek brothers, Justin Cornell, Josh Davey, Wamet, all those guys. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chad George is definitely. Chad know. George was a huge pickup for him too. Again, stellar lineup. That it speaks to the level. And we've been talking. If you've been listening all day, <laughs> but you know we got to repeat this stuff because it's important tidbits of information at the pro level is that at, at this level there's a ton of really good teams. Speaking of tons of good teams, two of them are going to be throwing down for our last game of the day. We got Dynasty taking on damage. I'm Matty Marshall. I got Chris Soy up here for the last game. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. More paintball action coming at you. 2011 PSP Chicago Open.